All right, guys, welcome to our week three battle for the UPA. We are playing Dork and the San Diego Charizards. We have our team. You saw the team builder already. This is going to be what we're, what we're using. I just got back from a walk from my friend's place and it crossed my mind that Talonflame can run Steel Wing. And that really terrified me because of Deancey. Now, I ran the Calc. Adamant uh, Talonflame outspeeds our Deancey. And... Well, it outspeeds any variant of Deancey, so he would want to run it Adamant. And Steel Wing, Choice Banded, Max Attack, Adamant, does Max 97. So, if I can condition him into thinking that he can knock out our Deancey with a Steel Wing, I can knock back out his Talonflame. Now, if I see the Talonflame, rocks are going to be a priority, so I'm really hoping it doesn't come. Uh, alternatively, there's a ton of things that I, don't, I really wish wouldn't come. I think I, I, I wish he would just bring the Pichu, to be honest, but that's not going to happen. So I'm going to challenge him right now. Got to message him first, so I'm going to pause it, guys. And we'll get right into it. You guys are going to come back right now on Team Preview, so stay tuned. All right, guys, we are back, and I'm looking at his team. Now, I see the Talonflame. I'm very aware that the Talonflame is right there in front of my face. I see the Jellicent, which I was actually was not expecting would come, so I'm a little surprised. Now, I think his best possible lead against me is the Needle Queen. We have a plan for Needle Queen. We are going to lead with our Stoutland, and we are going to try to win this game. Now, I gotta um, let me let me actually sit back and think about this lead option right now because while leading a, leading with Stoutland against the Needle Queen is cool and all, he did bring the Jellicent. We are packing the Crunch for it. Actually, wait a second. Does Quillfish get Poison Point? I have to check this real quick, guys. Sorry about this. Uh, add Pokemon, Quillfish. Do you get... You get Poison Point. Okay, so you're not just an Intimidator. You're also po a potential Poisoner. Alright, let's go... I'm gonna lead with our Stoutland. And we're not putting on timer anymore, guys, because we are... Uh, we are... Uh, we have decided within ourselves, within the league, that we would not play with a timer on because everybody makes their uh, decisions in a timely fashion, us usually. So he does lead with the Needle Queen as we lead with our Stoutland. Now, I just have to calc this really quickly because I don't think I ever ran the, qu the calc, but if he's an offensive ha hazard uh, setter with max attack, adamant. And he's rocking the superpower. For example, um, he can't take us out. Uh, wait, that's Chestnut. Whoops. Hold on. <laughs> Stoutland. Mika. I, saw, I thought I had said it to Mika. Okay, he still can't take us out. So, I'm just gonna go for the return. Right here. He's gonna switch into his Jellicent. Now, he might think I'm banded. Because of that play. He might also think that he can just will o me for free. Which is the case. Actually, he didn't bring the T-Tar, which means that uh, Latias actually has a pretty decent matchup against him, minus the HP fighting, which is not going to come into effect. But I want to see how much this Stoutland, our Mika, does to his Jellicent if he's running a physically defensive variant with Crunch. It doesn't do too much. It, doesn't do, it does not do too much. And he can easily Will-O-Wisp us. But I think I need damage off on this thing. How useful is our Stoutland? Let's take a look at it. We can intimidate the Talonflame once before it comes back in. Alright, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna get off some damage on this thing. As he goes for the Toxic, cool, so that means he can't poison us, which is awesome. And now on this thing, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch into our Weavile. Because Weavile has a decent matchup against this thing. It could be rocking the Cobra Berry. I fully expect that. He's gonna go for the Recover. And I think I'm just gonna go for the Swords Dance here, because we are a Lum. He can Toxic us, he can he can uh, burn us, but it won't do anything. And I want to see this set against our Weavile if we go up to plus two. Uh, all out attacker. Well, did we see leftovers? Hold on a second. He is leftovers, so he's not Colber. Um, Weavile. Our Weasley. Okay, so knockoff at plus two takes this thing out. Which means we just get rid of it. I want to see how much it does to Quillfish if he's Intimidate at plus one. So let's see. Quillfish, let's say Defensive Spiker. Knockoff still does a ton. So we're going to go for the Swords Dance right here. He's going to bring in the Quillfish, and we're going to be able to SD up on this thing. Now I need to check Quillfish's sets for a second, see what it can potentially get as moves. Does it get any fighting type moves? It can get Hidden Power Fighting. Let's just type in Fighting. We're taking a little more time now with our decisions. Um, you can get Revenge. If the user is damaged by the target, it does double. 
He could be packing the revenge specifically for us. I don't know if I actually want to play around with that because this thing has such a good matchup against this team. <sighs> Hold on. Let's see how much Quillfish does with revenge. Yeah, it knocks us out. <laughs> Why did I even question that? Um, you know what? I'm just going to get damage off on this thing. Oh, it's fully Fizz Death. He goes for the Thunder Wave. We are Lum, so we're able to take that. He's not rocking an item. That's why he took that so well. I'm going to switch into our Stoutland right here. On his next potential Thunder Wave. As that is what he goes for. Okay. So now I have to think this through here. He's not going to go for another Sludge Wave. Uh, another uh, Thunder Wave, I mean. Definitely not with this thing in its face. So I'm going to go into our... Yeah, I'm going to go into our Latias right here. As he switches right back in, out into his Jellicent. Good play. Now, what's going to come in on me? He can go for a Shadow Ball. He can go for a Toxic. Shadow Ball is the only thing that breaks our sub, so we're going to go for it. We're going to scout for the Shadow Ball right now and see if he has it. And we're pretty sure he's full Fizz Def. I can actually calc that using the Stoutland set. Stoutland, Mika versus the Jellicent. Are you physically defensive? Crunch, unless it was an absolute low roll. Let's see, Crunch, 38. No, that's about correct. So he is full Fizz Def. So how much does Latias' Psychic do to this thing? Lati Latias, Clara. Clara, how much do you do? Not a lot. But behind a sub, behind a sub, you actually put in a lot of work. So let's see. He could be fearing the Shadow Ball. For sure. How much would a Shadow Ball do from us? Shadow Ball. 35 to 41, so it's not too much. This thing is very specially tanky, so. I'm gonna go behind a sub. He goes for a Scald, and he's not going to be able to break our sub, even with a crit. And now we're going to be able to get off a free Psychic on this thing. As he goes for a Shadow Ball, and he actually breaks our sub. Okay, cool. So he does have it. Alright. So what we're going to do is we're going to calc how much his Shadow Ball is going to do to us. Because if a crit Scald didn't take us out, he's got no special attack investment. Shadow Ball does 37 to 44, and I think it has the same chance to lower our Spedef as our Psychic does on him. And if he's rocking the Shadow Ball and Toxic, I'm going to fire off another Psychic right here. Try to get a Spadef drop as we don't get it. He's going to go for a Scald right there. He's not going to get a Burn, luckily. And I'm going to take this as an opportunity to switch into our Chestnut right here. Chestnut has a very good matchup against him. I, I kind of don't want to switch it in on a Toxic, to be honest, but I don't think he's going to go for that. I'm just going to sub up here, actually, and uh, hold on to my sub. And try to get a psychic off. We are bulletproof on uh, on our on our chestnut, so we will be able to we will be able to take the shadow ball no matter what. So I'm going to switch into it right here, and we're going to get up another sub on this thing. He's going to go for a skull this time. Hopefully, he doesn't burn us, as he does not. Great, awesome. Okay, so he can't touch us once again behind a sub. So let's go for it. The sub mons are working out. He goes into his Nido Queen. Okay, so we get a sub off. He's uh, he's gonna be able to break our sub, obviously. And I want to calc what does more to his Nido Queen. He's got a lot of walls. This team's very annoying. Nido Queen. Let's say it's offensive versus our Chestnut. We'll calc with defensive as well. Uh, Koba. How much do you do with a Zen Headbutt? Ooh, very nice damage. Okay. Alright, it's 90% accurate. Let's try to land this. As we are faster than his Needle Queening, we get off 48% on it. He's gonna go for the Sludge Wave. Now, Earth Power is incredibly obvious right here. It's incredibly obvious because I could easily switch out into my Blade right now. But, I know I can't take a Sludge Wave. Alright, well, we're weakening his team. His Poison types are extremely weakened. Uh, his Jellicent's down to 80. His offensive mons in the back are still very, very healthy. But our Weavile still has its full health as well. So the Lumberry was really only to damage the Quillfish, as we found out. And here, I'm going to go into our Mika. 
because he seems to be physically defensive. He took that rather well. He's going to go for the Sludge Wave. We are Assault Vest. We're able to take that. And I'm just going to go for a Crunch right here and try to weaken this thing a little bit further. Stotland's done its job. He's going to go back into his Jellicent. I'm going to go for the Crunch. It's going to do 38%, and we are going to get the Defense Drop right there. Very unfortunate for him. It's about time Hack starts working in our favor a little bit. 38%. Does he have a Crunch switch in? He only has his Quillfish. I'm going to go for Crunch again because I can't risk this thing recovering up in my face. And if he switches into his Quillfish, that leaves his Jellicent weakened. He goes into his Talonflame. I could have Rock Tombed right there. He is Leftovers. Confirmed, not Banded. Okay, good. Here we go. He does, He's not carrying the Bullet Punch either. On uh, well, He doesn't have the Metacham, so he's not carrying the Bullet Punch. Which is amazing. Because now he doesn't have a very good Deancey switch in. I'm just going to go for Rock Tomb right here. He's going to go for U-Turn, so he does have the U-Turn. We're going to let our Stoutland go down, but we've weakened his team immensely. And now, depending on what he goes into, we've weakened his Nidoqueen to the point where it gets taken out by an Earth Power. Our Zen Headbutt should have done 46 to 55, unless I got a very low roll. Let's see. Well, 48 is a, is a mid roll, so he could still be very offensive. Yeah, he's probably very offensive. Question is, is he not? Is he packing enough speed to outspeed our Deancey before Mega Evolution? That's my question. And now that I know his Talonflame's not offensive, that just makes Deancey's job even easier. He could be offensive with leftovers, but I mean. All right, he goes into his Thunderous. Now Thunderous can easily be packing the knockoff and the superpower, very easily. Hidden power flying for the chestnut. So, knowing that. Is my best play just to go into our our De Blade and just hit this thing as hard as we can and weaken it even further? Weaken his team even further? Let's see. Let's say OU Thunder Wave plus three attacks versus our De Blade. How much do we do? UU Swords Dance. All right, so no, that's not our set. Hold on. De Blade, winner. How much are you doing with Shadow Claw? Eh, not as much as I would like. We know that Weavile can destroy this thing's life with a knockoff or an ice shard. Let's see, Weavile. Weavile, Weasley, how much do you do? Knockoff is not enough. He can knock us out with the superpower or the focus blast. He would probably be running focus blast. I'm assuming he's running knockoff on this thing specifically for our De Blade. Actually, let's calc that really quickly. I need to see how much the blade actually takes from a mixed thunderous. Thunderous mixed attacker. How much does knockoff do? 31 to 37. And then if we don't have the Eevee light on, it's still doing 31 to 37. Same roll. All right, so we're gonna go into our blade, and we're gonna go for a Shadow Claw. Now he doesn't have a very good switch into this right now because we weakened his team severely. So. I'm fully expecting him to pack the knockoff specifically for this. He could also just Thunderbolt me. I think it would actually do more. Yeah, it would actually do more. Especially if he's Life Orb. It could, uh... Oh, wait, that's not with the Eevee Light on. Hold on. Eevee Light. I got scared there for a second. I thought we were going to get knocked out. Eevee Light. Okay, so he definitely does a lot to us. But he doesn't do enough to take us out. That's for sure. So we're going to get off another big hit on something here. I could potentially sweep with our uh, De Blade late game. If he's not packing the uh, the Will-O-Wisp on the Talon Flame, because we already saw Jellicent's full set, we can easily knock out the Cryogonal at plus two. I'm pretty sure. Cryogonal, offensive spinner, uh, Shadow Sneak. Without the plus, yeah, yeah, it's dead. It's gone. That thing has abysmal defense. I don't know why he brought it exactly. I mean, it does have a pretty good matchup against my team, especially if I brought the Seismitoad, which I didn't. I think I prepped pretty well for his team. I think uh, Chestnut can actually still put in a lot more work because if he leaves in the Talonflame, now that we know his Talonflame is not offensive, uh, we can we can set up on the Jellicent every single time it comes in and gets a knockout. We can go into... He does go for the knockoff right there. So we are going to go... For, oh, he is Life Orb. Okay. So we're going to go for the Shadow Claw right now. It's going to do 65%. And now we're going to go for the Sneak because we can. And that'll knock this thing out because Shadow Claw is base 70 and that's doing more than half of what we just did, so. His Thunderous is definitely going down to this. I could definitely see him switching out. He got rid of our Eviolite, which is a little unfortunate, but the Blade can still put in work. 
We are going to take out the Thunderous right there. Crit didn't matter, as you saw from the Shadow Claw damage. And we got rid of a very, very big threat right there. Now, if he goes into Nidoqueen, here's the thing. If he goes into Nidoqueen right now, he can go for an Earth Power. But we know that our Chestnut is faster than his Nidoqueen. So if he goes for Earth Power and we switch out into Chestnut, we could potentially get a kill or set up a sub in front of him. So I don't think he can risk that. So his team is extremely weak to our Chestnut now. If we're behind a sub, we can do a lot of damage. We have the Rock Slide for the Talonflame. I would love to get up Rocks at this point. He does still have the Spinner, but his Spinner is weak to my Stealth Rocker. So he chooses to go into his Talonflame. Now this thing is definitely packing the Flare Blitz. We know it's not banded, right? Talon flame. OU, let's say it's offensive. Just just basically offensive with Steel Wing. Alright. We calced this earlier. DNC. I want to see if I can take a Flare Blitz into Steel Wing. We know he's leftovers. So we know he's he's not even Shark Beak, actually. So we can get rid of that. And now we can go into our DNC. Hello. <laughs> Deancey. Let's see. Dope. Dope, how much do you take from a flare? Nothing. Steel Wing does 50 to 59. That's if he's fully offensive. So, I can do one of two things here. I can let this thing go down. Actually, I want to calc something real quick. How much does his fully defensive Quillfish uh, defensive take from our Deancey's Earth Power? It gets knocked out. Okay. So I'm actually going to go for a Shadow Claw right here. He's going to go for the Flare Blitz. He's going to let himself take damage right there. And I'm going to go into our Deancey. And pretty much bait him to go for the Steel Wing right here. Because I'm pretty sure he's packing it. I'd be shocked if he wasn't. Now, I need to run another Calc really quickly. I need to see how much Mika's... Uh, wait, we calc that already, right? The crunch on the Jellicent. We already established that it's fully physically defensive, so it shouldn't be able to take a Moon Blast from the Mega Deancey. Let's see. His, uh, his Jellicent. Jellicent fully... Ooh, wrong one. Jelly. Jellicent fully physically defensive. It can. It can, but it can't take Diamond Storm into it. He's got the Steel Wing. I know he does. Oh, no, he doesn't. Okay. Cool. So we'll be able to go for the big uh, Diamond Storm right here. Which means, if he's carrying the U-turn, and he's carrying the Flare Blitz, and he has to be carrying... Wait, what? You didn't know? I traded it, man. <laughs> he didn't know that we had Mega Deancey! I said it in the chat. I announced it and everything. What? No, I updated it. I, I'm sure I updated my sheet, man. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Uh, I think he was under the impression that I had Mega Slowbro, so... Let's see what people are saying in the chat. I think, uh... I think <laughs> Dork's kind of upset. Um... I'm gonna pause it right here, guys. I'll be right back. Alright, guys, we are back, and after a little bit of controversy, um... It turns out Dork didn't know because there's two different tabs on our spreadsheet and he was under the impression that I still had Mega Slowbro when I had updated my specific team sheet to show Mega Deancey. I put out my video, I announced it in the chat, in our Skype chat, but I mean there's nothing we can really do here. We gotta knock out this Needle Queen right here. And uh... Uh... Yeah. So... That's very unfortunate for him, I'm really sorry about that man I didn't think that was gonna happen but unfortunately it did uh, now I mean Deancey still puts in work on him uh, I'm gonna get up my rocks right here I think because we are defensive slightly Mega Deancey versus Jellicent Skull does 45 to 53 so I'm just gonna go for the stealth rocks here I think um, well no his talent flame doesn't get knocked out I think I might rather go for the just the moon blast and lower potentially lower his special attack uh, I know that Moonblast doesn't take him out. Uh, I'm actually going to switch into my Latias here. As he goes for the Recover. Okay. That's fine. And now he has to make a choice. He has to decide whether he wants to Shadow Ball and potentially let my Chestnut come back in for free. He has to... Uh, or he, he has to go for a Scald and try to get a Burn. So he has to make a play right here. Let's see what he chooses to do. He goes for the Shadow Ball. 
It's a good play. Now, Shadow Ball takes me out at this range. So I fully expect him to not go for it again, being as I have a Chestnut in the back. But we did say before that I could just bring in Chestnut on this thing after it gets a kill, like right now, and get up another sub, and basically just wall whatever wants to come out. So, not a big deal. We should still be able to win this game off of misinformation from my opponent, but that's very unfortunate on his part. I'm really sorry about that. But I mean, if I did have the Mega Slowbro instead of the Mega Deancey in this game, this is pretty much over if I got up a Calm Mind on this thing. So, I mean, he had to run the Toxic, which he was running, but again, Chestnut walls this thing, so I don't know. It's, uh, it's a very controversial, uh, controversial, sh uh, controversial, I can't say controversial, guys. It's a very controversial subject. Uh, I won't get into it too much, but um, I'm pretty sure Rock Slide takes him out here. Chestnut. Chestnut, Koba versus his um, Cryogonal. Go now. Offensive Rapid Spinner. Uh, Rock Slide does enough, so we're just going to go for it here. He's going to go for the Freeze Dry. It's going to be able to knock out our sub, and hopefully we'll be able to hit this Rock Slide as we do, and we're able to take out the Snowflake. And, um, yeah, again, just Deancey. Deancey just walling his Jellicent right now. His, uh, I mean, his, uh, his Talon Flame right now is uh, really going to hinder him. He's going to pull the switch into his Jellicent, so good play on his part. Uh, it does get the leftovers right there. I have to pull a double, I think. Well, his... Actually, hold on a second. What do I need this for? I don't need it for anything, do I? I gotta be very careful about this. I'm gonna pull another switch back into our chestnut. As he goes for a scald, he needs a burn right here. As he does get it, actually. Wow. Very, uh, very unfortunate for us, but we have to deal with it. And, uh... I mean, I think we have to pull the switch directly into Weavile. And then just go for the knockoff. He does still have the Quillfish. Uh, he's actually going to pull a switch into his Quillfish. Very nice. Very good on his part. Uh, what is he packing again? He's packing Thunder Wave, right? So I could bounce that back, but I don't want to get Scald Burned. So let's go for the Swords Dance. We know he's got the Thunder Wave. He could easily predict that. He goes for the Waterfall. Very good. Going to go for the knockoff right here. And um, going to be able to damage this thing even further. Jellison just became an issue, though. Seriously? The Jellicent just became a very big issue, so... Gotta be very careful with that thing. We are at plus one. I'm curious to know if that takes out a fully defensive Quillfish. I don't think it does. Defensive Spiker. Uh, it's got very low uh, HP, though. Let's see. Weavile. How much do you do? Weasley. Ice Shard, give me plus two. 13 to 16. So we need a very high roll there. To be able to do that, so... I don't think that's gonna happen. Uh, his Jellicent's at 59. That's way too high. I have to... I think I have to pull a switch into our uh, our Chestnut here. As he goes for Waterfall, it's going to do a little bit. We're going to get Leftovers plus Burn. We could still potentially lose this. Guys, um, kind of worried now. I'm just going to go for the Rock Slide. It's not going to be able to take this thing out, but it's going to uh, basically put it in range where I can just bring it in Deancey. And... I don't know if I want to go for the Stealth Rocks or not. I don't know how they, how important they are right now. Curious. Um, nah, I'm just going to knock this thing out with the Moonblast. There we go. Take it out. Covered the uh, Jellison switch. And he brings it in. And I pretty much have to go for Moonblast right here and try to lower his special attack. As we do get it. And he's going to go for the Scald. And it's not going to do enough. It doesn't get the burn either. So now he's faced with the decision. Actually... I don't think he's even faced with the decision. Do we knock this thing out with a uh, with a Diamond Storm? Let's see. Uh, Mega Deancey, where's ours? Dope versus Talon. Uh, not Talon, versus Jellicent. I'm getting nervous again because of those misplays. Uh, physically defensive. How much does Diamond Storm do? 32. Yeah, I'm going to go for the, uh, the Diamond Storm. He's obviously very upset because of the fact that... Um, because of the fact that I was able uh, to switch out Mega Slowbro for Mega Deancey and he didn't know about it. I did say it in the chat. It should have been updated. I don't know. Um, I wasn't aware that you needed to update it in both sheets. So he's going to go for the Brave Bird right there. It's going to do absolutely nothing. And guys, we connect the Diamond Storm and we are able to win our 
Uh, week three match of the UPA. We are now one and two. And I'm gonna upload this and share the replay. And uh, we are able to take that on a formality. He did think that we had Mega Slowbro, but you know what? That's a little bit of, I, I guess you could say it's a little bit of my fault. It's a little bit of the league's fault. But uh, I'm gonna take the win regardless. Uh, he's gonna say GG. I'm gonna drop a GG for him as well in the chat. And uh, that's gonna be it for uh, this week, guys. If you enjoyed, leave a, leave a like down below. Cheer on your Montreal Habsols. And uh, again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Ciao.